In this video, we're going to talk about cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a hereditary uh, disease, and it, it basically is a disease that involves abnormal secretions. And abnormal secretions are really uh, involving any gland that secretes fluids into a duct. So any exocrine gland, basically. And these thick secretions eventually clog um, these ducts and cause a lot of problems. So let's get started. And before I get into the symptoms and the diagnosis and treatment, let's explain what is actually happening. So this is a diagram where I'm uh, drawing um, the skin here. So this is the epidermis and a little bit further down is the dermis. This uh, here is the sweat duct lumen, okay? And this is the skin surface up here. And we all know that what comes out of this duct? Well, water comes out. And then along the, the lining of this duct are cells, and that's what these represent. And uh, these are epithelial cells. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take a section right here and I'm going to blow it up over here. I'm going to draw it much bigger. Yeah. So, so the, this is a this here is the duct, okay, and uh, this here is one cell, one epithelial cell. All right. Now that we have this drawn, I can talk about what happens in cystic fibrosis. In cystic fibrosis, you have this, this protein right here, okay? And this protein has a special name. It's called CFTR. And CFTR stands for Cystic Fibrosis Transmembrane Conductance Regulator. It's a protein. And what is it? What does it do? Well, it is a chloride channel. What does it mean, chloride channel? Well, the chloride goes back into the cell via this channel. All right? Now, there's another uh, um, channel that exists uh, in the same cell. It's called a sodium channel. And the sodium channel, as you can imagine from the name of the channel, it transports sodium. And sodium goes out into the duct. So sodium comes out, chloride goes back into the cell. Great. Now, what happens in cystic fibrosis? Well, in cystic fibrosis, I'll draw the same diagram. This is the, the duct, okay? And we'll just draw one cell, one epithelial cell. Well, in cystic fibrosis, that CFTR protein chloride channel that is responsible for chloride transport is either defective or absent. So therefore, the chloride doesn't go back into the cell. The chloride just gets secreted out along with the water. Okay. And then what happens to the sodium? Well, interestingly, the sodium uh, channel is perfectly normal in cystic fibrosis. So the sodium also goes out, just like it would normally. Well, look at what we have here. We have sodium and chloride together, and that's salt. Salty. Salty taste of the sweat. That's what's happening. Uh, I hope this makes sense. I mean, this is a very kind of a basic way of describing this because the pathophysiology of the CFTR is very complex, and I just wanted to give a, a, a brief uh, introduction of, of what this is all about. Now, this of course causes major problems because it causes secretions here out of any duct really that is involved in this kind of a process to have secretions that are that are what? That are very very thick, okay, sticky, and highly viscous, 
high viscosity. And that is really the major issue that's happening here. I'll draw a little little diagram to kind of illustrate what would happen in just one of the areas that cystic fibrosis um, affects. So this is an airway that I'm drawing. Okay, this is an airway. Well, this is a normal airway. You see how big the space is. Now, let's. What happens in cystic fibrosis? Well, these abnormal, thick, sticky, highly viscous secretions clog the airway. Do you see what's happening? And do you see how the passages are getting narrower because of all this? This similar type of process happens in ducts all over the body, in any type of uh, exocrine gland. And those glands are, include the lung, pancreas, intestines, and other things as well, like reproductive organs. But we're going to concentrate just on uh, really these two here the lung and the pancreas when I talk about symptoms and and uh, treatment okay so let's get into that let's get into the symptoms well when you talk about symptoms we probably it's probably best to kind of break this up into lung pancreas and intestines otherwise it'll it'll be too confusing all right so let's let's do that Okay, well, I'm going to start by talking about symptoms in kind of a chronological order, meaning what's the first thing to present, and then kind of go from there. Well, when a child is born, a newborn, the very first thing that can happen is something that involves the intestines, and it's called meconium ileus. Okay, meconium ileus, meconium is just the first stool that a baby has. And the term meconium ileus just simply means that um, the meconium is uh, uh, obstructed in the large intestine, and as a, as a result, it's not passing. So the child may not have a bowel movement for one to two days after birth. So that's the first thing that can happen. Now let's keep going chronologically. The next thing that can happen is in the lungs, something called mucus plugging mucus plugging. Well, that diagram I drew earlier kind of illustrates what that means is that the airways get uh, clogged with uh, this uh, thicky stick secretion uh, that's uh, the, the uh, main uh, contributing factor to the pathology of this uh, disease. And that mucus plugging is not without its problems. It causes bacterial infection, and it can cause inflammation as well. And that is a chronic disorder, chronic symptomatology that cystic fibrosis patients have to live with. Other symptoms that can happen that are related to the lung include coughing, wheezing, and um, respiratory tract infections. So those are the symptoms associated with the lung. Now let's talk about the pancreas. Well the pancreas normally secretes digestive enzymes and those digestive enzymes go into the intestine but in a person with cystic fibrosis these enzymes are not able to reach the intestine because of the blockage of the ducts that we illustrated earlier. So as a result you get poor absorption of the fats and the proteins and the vitamins that the digestive enzymes of the pancreas normally are responsible uh, or aid in absorbing. Uh, this can also eventually lead to poor growth in the child and nutritional deficiencies. And also, as, as you all know, the pancreas is responsible for producing insulin and when the pancreas become, becomes scarred because of cystic fibrosis, it can no longer produce enough insulin, and that leads to diabetes. 
So these are the symptoms that are uh, involved um, in uh, cystic fibrosis. Um, let's just keep going here. There's a few more um, that I wanted to talk about. Uh, let's just keep going here with the pancreas. Um, the nutritional deficiencies can also lead to poor weight gain. Um, that's a big one actually. Very, very big one. And an another thing that a child can develop because of the pancreatic uh, problem is the bulky foul smelling stools because the fats that are normally absorbed are not being absorbed and they're just being secreted along with the stool. Bulky foul smelling stools. Okay. Well, that's a bit about the uh, um, symptoms. There's one more thing I'd like to mention uh, before I jump into the diagnosis is something that I see a lot on licensing exams is rectal prolapse. This is a common, uh, as many as 20% of infants can have this. It just means the lining of the rectum has protruded through the anus. I've seen licensing exams in which they just show a picture of a rectal prolapse and they ask you what di what's the diagnosis, so I wanted to mention that. Well, now let's get into the diagnosis. How do you diagnose this? How do you figure this out? Well, it's a famous test, sweat chloride test. As I mentioned early in the video, chloride concentration in, in the secretions is much higher than a normal person because of the chloride not being able to uh, uh, get reabsorbed into the cells. It's just being kicked out into the ducts and eventually into the secretions and it's going to be high. I think it's 60 milliequivalents per liter. Greater than 60 milliequivalents per liter is what you would have in a cystic fibrosis patient. Very, very diagnostic. Well, now finally we get to the treatment. And just like I did with the symptoms, I'm going to break it up into lung and pancreas. Okay. Well, for lung, the first thing you want to make sure is that you immunize the child immunizations because people with cystic fibrosis, children with cystic fibrosis, can develop uh, respiratory infections, which uh, such as Haemophilus, influenza, measles. So you want to make sure you immunize them to all those things. The next thing that's part of the treatment is something called pulmonary toilet. Now, what is that? That's referring to airway clearance techniques where you use either chest percussion or hand vibration over the chest wall and encourage the patient to cough and all these are in an attempt to clear these secretions that build up in the airways. The next thing you give is something called a bronchodilator known as albuterol and this is to open up those airways that are clogged with these thick secretions. The next thing you give is a mucolytic. Mucolytic by definition is something that breaks up the mucus and the famous one that they always talk about is Dornay's Alpha. Dornay's Alpha. Um, the next thing that you give in the part of the treatment is antibiotics and in particular there's two. There's azithromycin and there's tobramycin. By far the two most common in cystic fibrosis. And finally steroids Steroids are a big component of the treatment because they decrease uh, the inflammation that can occur in the lung. Now let's get to the pancreas. Well, remember we said that the pancreatic enzymes that are uh, normally secreted are not being um, are not reaching the intestine properly. So you need to give pancreatic enzymes as a supplement to the child. Pancreatic enzymes, and they're given as capsules and the, the, the child or the person with cystic fibrosis takes these with meals and snacks. Another thing that you give is uh, fat soluble vitamins because if you remember the person with cystic fibrosis is not able to absorb fats and fat soluble vitamins are therefore part of the supplementation and if you remember they are A, D, E and K. These are the vitamins. Finally to close off the presentation I'd like to just show a vignette uh, and kind of show you what is a licensing exam uh, question about cystic fibrosis look like. Well, here we go. 
A one-year-old child presents with failure to thrive. So there's that poor growth that we talked about. By history, the child was born at the 50th percentile, but has crossed multiple percentile lines despite having a ravenous appetite. The child has more bowel movements per day than other children of the same age. Okay, what is that talking about? That's talking about all the... That's... That's basically discussing, you know, those pancreatic enzymes are not reabsorbing a lot of those nutrients. So they're just going through the system into the stool and causing more bowel movements. Uh, the stools often look shiny and have an unusually foul smell. We talked about that. In addition, the child has been treated with multiple courses of antibiotics for persistent wet cough. Those are those um, infections or uh, recurrent infections that can happen and cystic fibrosis. On measurement, the child is small for age with weight and length below the third percentile. So that's definitely the, the you know, the, the poor weight gain and uh, that we discussed. A sweat chloride test is positive. Whoa, that's a big one right there. Most likely diagnosis is. And of course, they'd give you five choices and one of them is probably cystic fibrosis. That's a very straightforward cystic fibrosis question. And that's a presentation about cystic fibrosis.